Welcome. This is Building a Bridge of Middle School Proficiency with Nuestra Historia Puentes, and we're going to be looking at our newest middle school title together. So I'm Melissa. I'm a curriculum manager at Ball States Digital. I just wanted to let you know that I've been teaching middle school for a very long time. So Puentes was very near and dear to my heart as I was working on it because I've been with middle school students for such a, a long amount of time. Today we're going to be looking at uh, quite a bit. We're going to look at why Puentes, why did we feel the need to create this cur curriculum? We'll look at the overall design of Puentes, some of the features that make Puentes unique. I'll show you how you can use these features, and then we'll talk about how you can plan your middle school program using Puentes. So first of all, our vision for making this middle school text. We needed a K-12 curriculum. We have Nuestra Historia, the high school levels on one end. We just concluded Primaria on the other end. So kind of filling that in and bridging that gap, we've now got Puentes that gives you your middle school curriculum so that you can go, actually I think it's pre-K-12 and not just K-12. It's also a middle school friendly curriculum. So it's great. It's tailored for all of those interesting personalities that you find in the middle school level. And it can also be used as an alternate as a level one. So if you've been using regular Nuestra Historia level one, you could use this one because it might work better with your uh, middle school students. The design is um, we've got nine units and sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, we've got nine units. And so you can see an overview of what each of those entail. We also have a pre-unit that focuses on the Super 7. It's a great way to start your school year, just getting used to your students, establishing those routines. Um, we also have a cultural exploration, exploration and we have the Go Vive a Tu Manera that you could use that are also with other, other titles as well. Looking at one unit, it starts out, you've got your four stories. Those are like the main, like the core of what you really need to get into with your students. And each of the four stories is broken down, has its vocabulary, which you work on with TPR. It's got PQA, the personal questions and answers to get to know your students through the vocabulary. It's got story asking, so your students can create their own story. You've got the reading, which is like the actual story that we provide for you. And then some follow-up activities to give to build your students' comprehension. After that, you've got two long stories that have their own activities to go along with them. They're often used as like an assessment or just like some extra practice. We have an extended culture section that has three embedded readings and then a culture lesson that is enough to fill like one or even more class periods. We have the extra extra section, which has interviews, the world of photos, panoramas and music. And we have your assessments, which are your IPA, your integrated performance assessment and your tests. So looking at Puentes, it is unique from the other titles that we have. So if you've been with Voces for a while, or you've been to some of the other presentations and you've saw, seen what Nuestra Historia looks like at the high school level or at Primaria, there are some things that are different about this title. So we're gonna look at some of the content that you get in Puentes that you're not going to get with the other titles that just make it really good for middle school students. So the first thing that we have is increased emphasis on co-created stories. I found in my years in middle school that my middle school students absolutely loved the co-created stories. That was what really got them going in class. So I wanted to really focus on that because that's what gets the most student buy-in at this age level. So we've got two different types of story scripts as opposed to just one that you see in the high school levels. We have a long story script and a short story script. The long story scripts, they were written by Gary DiBianca, so you know they're good. Um, they're really good for longer class periods. So if you're like in a junior, senior high school mix and you have those longer class periods, you could use a longer story script because it's gonna um, fill the entire class period. These are also really high in rigor because your students have to attend to your messages for an extended period of time. So it's gonna make your class more rigorous. It's also really good for experienced CI teachers. So if you've been doing CI for a while and you're extremely comfortable with making up stories with your students, these long story scripts are perfect for you. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got the short story scripts. These are really good for shorter class periods. So if you're teaching in an actual middle school and you've got shorter meeting times with your students, you'll wanna work on these short story scripts so that you can get them done and get them done a little more quickly. They also have smaller chunks of language. So they're written more simply 
which makes it easier for some of your younger students that can't take in quite so much target language. I also think that these are really good for new CI teachers. I think that story asking can be pretty intimidating when you're new to CI. So this is a great baby step to like try out these stories. You're not committing yourself to a really, really long story experience, just so you can get it done and then breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, we made a story together, we are good to go. Here's an example of a long story script. So you can see that there, there's quite a bit there. And when you factor in that you're going to have to get the suggestions from your students as to what goes in the story, do the circling, have your student actors, this can very much occupy your entire longer class period. And then here is a shorter story script. Um, there's a little introduction right here. So if you take that away and you look at the actual text of the story, it's really quite short. So it's, you know, like I said, if you're really not comfortable with story asking yet, or your students don't really have the attention span to sit and listen to a really long story, this is going to be ideal for them. And you can see it's very short um, chunks of language. The short story scripts also often come with some sort of a presentation that give your students suggestions as to what they could supply in the story. So if you want to ask what happens next in the story or whatever, you're going to have that projection and your students can look at it and not have to come up with those things on their own. So an extra a little bit of scaffolding for your students as well comes with these short story scripts. So there's lots of different options that you can use with these short story scripts, it, just depending on the personality of your class, your level of com confidence with story asking. Um, you could start by just using one of the scripts. So if you really like the long story script versus a short story script, you could just use one of them or you could go the other way and do the opposite and just use the short story script instead of the long one. Or you could use both of them. You could do with actors for one of them. And then another one you could use maybe like Mad Libs or making a, a comic strip or um, any other way that you wanna do your story asking that doesn't involve your student actors. You could also use both of the scripts with your classes in like the traditional story asking. So if you've got a group of students that really, really vibe well, with asking stories and creating those stories together, you could have like the main part of your class be your own stories. And you could ask a story one day, follow up, ask another story a different day and follow up and have more of that where it's this content created by your students, that's the focus of your curriculum. Or you could also just um, ask one story and then have that other story script that you use as like a supplemental reading. So like maybe you need a sub plan one day, you just use that story script and you print it out for your students or you know, your students need a little bit of extra practice, that can just be something that you keep in your back pocket for what well, we've got a little bit of extra activity that we can use to just further reinforce the language. After you've made your story with your students, there's a, a whole section that's dedicated to just reinforcing and working with that story. Since they've got that buy-in, that's their story, they created it, it's really good to just milk as much as you can out of it. So there's a spot for you to type up your class story for your students to read it. You can select a review activity from our CI teacher toolkit, which is in your teacher resource section, um, and you can play some sort of a game with it. After that, your students have questions. They're like generic questions that don't matter. It doesn't matter what details your students provided. Whatever your story became, those questions are going to apply to it. So they can just answer those questions to show that they understood it. And then there's a section for them to retell the story as well. And on the left, you're going to see a video where I'm just scrolling through that page to show you the wide array of stuff that we have to work with your story. Something else that you're going to see in Puentes that you won't see elsewhere is expanded personal questions and answers. So this is where you use the language to help your students get to know you, to get to know each other, and to build a community in the classroom. So like you see in our other CI titles, you have your PQA sides that focus on each target structure. So you have your target structure and then some questions that focus on it. But then Fuentes takes those questions a little bit further so that your students can build further community and have more discussion with these target, um, target structures. So the next thing that comes up is a survey. And these are just multiple choice questions that have no right or wrong answer. Students have some choices that they can select. And then after they submit it, they will see a pie graph of how many people selected which answer. And these are great because you can use them as a follow-up conversation. So if you've got something where you can project your page, you can look at that pie chart and you can ask, okay, now how many people said this answer? Did more people give this answer or this answer? 
and then maybe ask some individual students, hey, so-and-so, did you choose this answer, this answer, or this answer, and why? And it's a great way to take the PQA and go even further to have more conversation with your students. We also included some student talk and disclaimer, I absolutely know that student talk isn't the most ideal thing for CI, but when you've got middle schoolers, um, they need those brain breaks, they need transitions. Sometimes they're really, really social and they just need a couple of minutes to talk to each other. So I think using the target language is a great way to do that. And it looks great for teacher evaluations. I know I had an administrator that always, anytime he came into my classroom, he wanted to see my students speaking in the target language. So this is a great way to say, yeah, look at that. Look at them talking using the language that they have. So not strictly CI, and I know that, but it's also, it's just really good for middle schoolers to use and, and kind of feel like, check me out. I'm talking the language. I'm so good at this. We also have some open-ended stories in Puentes. So when you come to the story that's pre-provided for you in the other titles, it's just a story. Um, and it's take it or leave it. That's what your story is. In a few of our Puente stories, we have an open end. So you read the story, it comes to a critical part, and then you've got a couple of options for how your story is going to end. So that kind of gives students even more buy-in because of it's, it's, it's a story that's provided for them, but it's also their story in a, in a little bit of a way. So it's like a choose your own adventure kind of story. So you can see I'm scrolling through one on a video here. You get to the end of the story and you're on a cliffhanger and you have to decide what happens next. And it's a multiple choice thing. Your students can vote on it. So you could do just like with the survey, have them click on their choice, submit it. And then you'd have um, a pie chart that shows you how many voted for each one. And you could use the one that has the highest vote. Or if you wanted to, you could have the students choose their own individual ending. So then everybody's got the choice that they made and that's the ending that they're going to go with. You could also have your students read it both ways. Maybe one day you read it one way and then the next day you read it with a different ending. And I think my internet's getting funny. So I'm gonna turn my camera off just so I don't get kicked out. So one second. All right, um, and then you could also as a teacher choose which ending that you like better. So if you really don't want your students to have that choice, you could say, this is the ending that we're going with and this is how our story is going to end. But it does give your students a little bit of extra buy-in if they get to choose how that story ends. And it's really just a fun way to see what they think should happen in a story. Something else that we have in Puentes is Cultura Breve. This comes as part of every one of your short stories and it just pulls the vocabulary that your students have been working on, their target structures, and tells them about something relating to the culture using those target structures in a very short, very concise way. So looking at uh, Cultura Breve, we do have one for, for Historieta, and it has, it starts out with a pre-reading. So we pull the cognates that are used in that reading and have students recognize them first. So it's like a matching, match this cognate with its English equivalent, just to prepare them for their reading. Then they're going to read something and it's really short because we wanted to make it easy for all students to read, regardless of what grade level they're in. Um, they all come with either a video or some really great pictures that help to bring that concept to life, which you can see here. Um, and then there's a survey. So surveys are happening all the time in here. So it's gonna ask them like, would you wanna visit this place? Or what is your opinion of this thing? Would you wanna participate in it or whatever? Um, and then it also asks students to describe it in their own words in English. So you can kind of get gauged, like how well did you understand this? Can you think critically about it? And another thing that we have in Puente that you won't see elsewhere are deeper explorations of our culture lessons. And these are full expanded, expanded lessons that you could have for a multi-day lesson. So it starts out with an introduction where you introduce the topic. It's got some sort of a, a pre-learning activity that activates their background knowledge and kind of builds up that interest for the topic. Then you have two readings that you can work through with your students. The first one is a slideshow. And then this long one is a longer format, like as an essay. You could use one of them or both of them, depending on your goals for your students. You could um, give the short version to students that need a, you know, a little bit of differentiation, or you could uh, assign both of them to your students. After that, we've got some review activities and extension that go along with it so that you can go even further into the topic that you're exploring. So taking a look at your short version, it's a slideshow. And I like to use these slideshows and read it with my students. So projecting the slideshow, 
reading the cap the caption that's there, asking students questions about it, circling, having a discussion so that they can be comfortable with what they're going to read later and have some discussion about it as well. Then you move on to your long version, which is more of like an essay kind of an outline, but it's got the images that go along with it to help students with their comprehension. And something else that we have in our Puente's curriculum that isn't elsewhere is a music activity. And these are really exciting. They were written by JJ Epperson, and you've probably heard her name all over the place. She is really renowned in the CI world. She created these. They've got uh, one suggested song per unit at least. Sometimes she gives a list of songs by a particular artist so that you could explore one artist per unit. Um, and then she gives you some suggestions for activities that you can do with your students to work with that song. So these are really fun. It's a great way to pull music into your lessons and, and just add that extra interest that middle schoolers are absolutely going to love. So that's all of the stuff that makes it unique. So we'll look at planning your middle school program with Puentes. Um, we're kind of covering a large group of students that are, there's just so much that happens between grades six and eight. I know that like when I would teach one grade in middle school, they'd come back the next year and they look like completely different people because they've grown so much. So there's a lot of difference between six, grades six and eight. So we try to make it so that you could use this with any of these levels and just tailor it to you. So we do have enough for one year or three years as your middle school program. So looking at those models, um, the first one that we have is a one-year program, which is where you would teach it probably to like your eighth graders. And this is what my teaching situation looked like when I was teaching. I had my eighth graders and they had to take Spanish one as eighth grade and they were getting their high school credit for that. So with this one, you're um, not going to do as many of your co-created stories. You're gonna use like the stories that we provide for you more frequently, and you're going to go through it more quickly. So there will be some things that you don't use. Um, and after your students have worked through this, they'll have the linguistic competence to get into second year Spanish. This is not like a one-for-one, one, like this is the exact same thing as Nuestra Three Story of One, but it's a good substitute where your students would feel confident they could take a test and they could test into level two if you wanted them to start with level two as ninth graders in their high school experience. We also have a two-year option. So if you were teaching grade seven and eight in your middle school, you're going to use most of the resources here. Um, you're going to use your embedded readings, probably not like all three versions, but maybe the middle like version B um, and then move up to the longer version in, in your eighth grade. And you'll do about four or five units per year for one year, five the next year. And that could be just because you work slower maybe in grade seven than you did in grade eight, or maybe you do five units in grade seven, four in grade eight, and then you do like a novel or you go into our cultural exploration or something like that. Um, it gives you a little bit of like wiggle room with what you do with that extra little bit of time. Or it might be some time that you just spend on the super seven pre-unit as well. And then we also have a model for three years. If you're going to teach grades six through eight, you're going to use pretty much everything that we give to you if you're doing a three-year model so that you can do about three units per year. When you're teaching the sixth graders, I would recommend that you use the short story scripts, that you use the version A of embedded readings only, and that you really focus on the cultura breve and short version of your culture lessons, just the stuff that's like the lower level that will make it easier for your students. And then as they progress, you can use the higher level content that's given on the same pages. So you could start using the long story scripts by the time they reach grade eight. You might use version C, the longest version of your embedded readings when you get to grade eight, just kind of progressing with them as they progress through the content. Okay, I got through that just about in time. Awesome. So what we looked at today was um, why did we create Fuentes? And it's here as a middle school curriculum between Primaria and Nuestra Historia. I showed you how you can teach with Fuentes by looking at the contents of Fuentes and then some of those features that make it different than the other um, series or other titles that we have in the series. And then we looked at the models for if you're planning to teach middle school with Fuentes, how you could do a one-year, a two-year, or a three-year program. If you have any questions about this presentation or 
Puentes in particular, please reach out to me. I love talking about Puentes. I had so much fun being the manager on this project. So my email is melissaf at bosesdigital.com. If you have questions about Bosace Digital in general, you can reach out to info at bosesdigital.com. And if you have any questions for me, you can go ahead and um, grab them in the chat. I do see there were some things in the chat that came up as I was presenting. And um, you can unmute as well if you have any questions. Oh, Eric, I see that you were in there re responding. Thank you for that. No problem. I did my best. Did you see that Martha asked for you to um, do a quick sample on something? I didn't catch quite what that was. Oh, yeah. Martha, would you explain what you would like a sample of? Yes, when um, at the very beginning, when you were doing the short story, okay, that we had the, the circling portion. Can you refresh my memory? Like I've done it numerous times, but I don't consider myself to be proficient yet. Okay. Because I don't do it as frequently. And I am looking forward to starting the year with using Nuestra Historia, or in this case, Puentes, more frequently. And it's just to give me like a little confident vote. Uh, what do I learn? What am I doing incorrectly? Am I on the okay. right track? Like really okay. quickly. Yeah, so circling, um, let's see, like we have this one right here. It says, um, muchacho no puede bailar más porque un hueso de su blah, 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 está roto. So your students could choose the body part that's broken. Um, and then you're going to say, like, let's say this LPA. So they're, you know, you're going to ask, um, un hueso de su pie está roto. And they'll say C. Sí. And then maybe you'll say, un hueso de su brazo está roto. And they'll say no. You can ask other questions, un um, hueso de su pie o su pierna está roto, and they'll say pie, um, and then you can say, um, donde tiene un hueso roto, just different questions to go around and reinforce that detail that they put into the story. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, awesome. I do have to feel more confident, but I, I'm doing exactly what you just said. Perfect, then you're doing exactly what you need to do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna go really quickly back down to the begin or to the ending. So if there are no other questions, and I can definitely take more questions if you guys decide to put some in. Um, thank you so much for attending this presentation. I hope you have a great year teaching with Volsace Digital. And I would love to invite you to join us at our CI Summit next year in Philadelphia. Uh, Melissa. Yes. A uh, quick question. You were saying that um, with sixth grade um, to start with the short story scripts, the version A of, uh, I guess, the stories and the cultura, um, mm -hmm. but then then you could go to the longer. Does that mean that if you do all the short things and then you come back, are you going to be doing the longer version of the same stories with them where if they you, would be like, we already yeah, did this or... There's a couple of different ways you could do it. If you wanted to do a vertically aligned curriculum where you go through all nine units um, one year and then go through them again the next year and like add more into it, then yeah, you would do like the extended like, oh, we read about this much last year. This year, we're going to learn a little bit more about it. If you decide to yeah. do them in sequence, like I'm going to do four units this year and five units next year, then you would just the next year you would skip past or use it as like a way of building up and like, okay, we'll read the simpler one first and then we're gonna move up to this more difficult one. So there's different ways that you could look at that. Okay. And is that is that kind of, I guess maybe like mapped out in the different ways? Cause I, I saw that you do have a lot of this stuff already in there, which is really nice. Um, is that kind of mapped out according to how you wanna do it? Yeah, we have a pacing guide that's going to be published and that's going to explain exactly how you can use those resources. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. That was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.